Well, to break it down, I'm joined by Kim Cobb. She's a professor of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at Georgia Tech and specializes in global climate change. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. This report certainly paints a dire picture of reaching the point of no return. Just for our viewers, I want to take them through a couple of the main findings before I get to the question. The report, of course, finding that temperatures could reach and stabilise at about 4 to 5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, that sea levels might rise up to 60 metres, and other systems could combine in a feedback loop to further drive up temperatures. So if it continues as is, we could have some parts of the Earth currently home to life uninhabitable. Yes, that's correct. I mean, if we, if we go down this road that we're on right now, we're facing the prospect for some tipping points, some thresholds in the climate system that will simply further accelerate the warming that's already underway. And so we do have some very important choices, and the faster we make them, the more we can contain that tail of damages that's coming down the pike. As we just saw, we've seen those uh, record-breaking fires, biggest fire in California. We've seen record heat waves in southern Europe, in Spain, and Portugal. Portugal, but also Japan, South yes. Korea, and we've seen uh, what is now the worst drought in Australia in living memory yeah. uh, that they're facing. Yeah. So tell us how long will it be if we continue as is before we reach that point of no return? Well, we, we don't know. I think we're already witnessing some of the very stressful consequences of global warming, which is the rise of global temperatures. And one of the most direct consequences of that are these heat extremes and heat waves that are going to continue coming. It's a virtual certainty. And so when we look at the wildfires, we know that there are many contributing factors to wildfires, but heat is a very important one. And so as we warm the planet on average, we're going to have these pockets come up every now and again that are, are just demonstrating that uh, this this heat that's coming is going to be uh, stressing human systems ecosystems uh, maybe not every year in every place but again this the statistical package becoming very very clear that these heat extremes and heat waves are are a certainty for our not just future but now and the current US president President Trump who's weighing in on the California fires he's tweeted a couple of times now yeah. blaming what he calls the bad environmental laws of California I think we've got one of those tweets I just want to bring it up because he says California wildfires are being magnified and made so much worse by the bad environmental laws which aren't allowing massive amounts of readily available water to be properly utilized it is being diverted into the Pacific Ocean, must also tree clear to stop fire from spreading. And now we've just heard from our sources at CNN that the White House is not commenting on this. They don't know where he got this information from. Right. What's your response to this? I mean, my response is that uh, we do understand so much about the water cycle. We do understand so much about what goes into trying to prevent these kinds of fires. We understand how climate change is impacting heat extremes, which are in turn contributing to fires. What I would say to the president is there's uh, dozens and, and hundreds of climate scientists, just like myself, who'd be willing to sit down with him and talk to him about the science of wildfires and the science of climate change and what we can do to fix this problem. So he need just pick up the phone. <laughs> what would you tell him? You know, when you see a statement like that, where do you start? I say, I would say to him that uh, your, your false choice between fixing this problem and building our economy uh, is bad messaging for the American people. They need to know that we can fix this problem and grow our economy at the same time and live a healthier life, not just for our children, but for ourselves as well in the process. So it's not a lose-lose scenario. There are win-win scenarios to fight for, and I'd love to partner with the administration in, in mo moving some of those along. This is an administration that has withdrawn from the Paris Climate Accord, and that accord, of course, is non-binding. They're, they're just, you know, their hopes of what we aim to reach for the countries that are signatories to it. Yes. Is that the solution? And if not, what, what are the answers here? Well, it's very clear that without international coordination like Paris, uh, we're going to have a very hard time turning the curve on our current emissions trajectory. Um, however, it's not enough. We also need every citizen of this world to ask what they can do to be part of the solution. They need to ask their institutions, uh, like their universities, their churches, uh, their businesses, to be part of the solution as well. And I've been very heartened by the groundswell of activity in that direction since this administration took office, people recognizing that Paris was never going to be enough, and we have to do it in our own homes, in our own business, and workplaces, and places of worship. That's the positive story from this. Well, it's really great to get your perspective. Uh, Kim Cobb from Georgia Tech, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you.